Good morning, y'all. Frank and Angie are here at the beach in Salinas, Ecuador. We're talking about small town or big city. Which should you choose so in your move abroad? our experience okay if you're new to our channel please understand that our experience does not encompass simply going into the middle of a bunch of foreigners and doing things the way foreigners do them we're living on a local level for six years and doing all the things the way locals do them as much as possible because there's challenges to that no question about it in Panama we did the the whole country pretty much except for Boquete. The Boquete was one area that I, I just knew in advance that it was so overtaken by by gringos or foreigners that it just I didn't want to waste my time with it. But Panama's untouchable um, even in the, the smaller towns the the smaller towns become real pricey and everybody every gringo in Panama will tell you this right away the minute you start talking to them about it they'll say well it's really pricey down there like they were saying uh, just a year or two ago that uh, the peninsula was the last bastion of a lower price but of course it doesn't last the minute you say that uh, the speculators jump in and buy everything up and parcel it out and piece it out and triple the price and that kind of thing just more capitalism yeah there's issues with things that end in ism but that's a different conversation small town what I've noticed is talking about small towns right now here in Salinas for example Ecuador is gone you know as far as the beachfront it's 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 gone this is like the Florida price now you know different parts of Florida are higher than other parts so the small towns get pricey really fast that's the thing about small towns and the big cities they have uh, their gringo bubble areas now we used to refer to we didn't, but the locals always told us when we were in Cuenca that in a, initially when we first landed there six years ago, there was a certain alley called Gringo Alley, and that's where the pricey area was. But eventually people moved out of that alley, and now they're all over the city, and the locals have been telling us for years, the whole city is Gringolandia. That's the word I was looking for, which, by the way, we did not coin that word. The locals did. The locals called it Gringolandia first. We simply repeated what the locals told us on our blog, and then it became common a word. The, uh, the whole city is a Gringolandia as far as Cuenca because it's a major point of incoming uh, gringos and foreigners, Cuenca is. E even though it's not small like a lot of the towns in Panama in the peninsula, like Pedasi and a lot of all those little, you know, you dream, you dream of small town on the beach, you know, easy going beach life. And of course the, the prices are just, on, you know, and it's the same thing over there in the northwestern corner of Panama. That's the latest thing they're trying to pump. We went there too.
there's a lot of international speculators which are driven by these retire abroad magazines you know i like the idea of improving uh, things making them better but somehow the idea that if you're a gringo and you're buying something and then you just turn right around and sell it and double or triple the price at least double it there's something about that that just it just doesn't sit very well with me but getting away from that the big cities we noticed even Quito has a bubble area a gringo bubble area or foreigner bubble area it, it's right there where they all you know where all the tourism is right there around the mall and the Carolina Park the big park and the mall which we just missed torrential flooding over there a couple of weeks ago it's not immune just because you're in that area so but uh, fortunately a city like Quito is big enough and uh, we've said before it tends to be able to absorb uh, just by sheer percentage of, of numbers uh, you know I mean a couple thousand uh, people uh, or a thousand people or 500 people moving there in a year whatever it is compared to the 3 million population is a much smaller percentage than say you know three four hundred people moving to a place like Salinas Ecuador Pedasi Panama that only have around 10 or 20 thousand people of that so the percentages are much larger and therefore the prices get affected a lot quicker well just in the six years we've been here the Salinas beachfront has become untouchable and the prices we heard in the small town peninsula of Panama were also ridiculous when you consider what the locals earn and that kind of thing but everything is relative isn't it relative to how much money you got <laughs> but you see that flies in the face of moving abroad because it costs less doesn't it wherever the gringos are is a bubble it's all bubble itis and the prices are the prices are higher than in the states now of course you know if you like to compare to the most expensive areas in the states like New York and California then no I mean those are the some of the most expensive cities in the world and so if you're always comparing you know this theory of relatively relativity just doesn't really wash very well because if you're always comparing to the most expensive place in the world then yeah it's always going to be a little cheaper isn't it so so whenever you hear somebody comparing and uh, they're comparing it to the most expensive places in the world you get big huge bubbles tremendous bubbles ridiculous bubbles these birds here are amazing I love these birds I like how the sun shines on the water it looks like people are slowly coming here today but that those are my observations uh, guys as far as moving abroad and then comparing small town to big city there's a lot more to it than that and we'll talk about that in the next video as always thanks for listening have a wonderful day bye bye